In this hour we will uh, review some of the things we saw about uh, three-phase circuits through some uh, numerical examples. Our first example concerns the following three-phase circuit. Consider the balanced three-phase circuit with positive phase sequence. A, B, C. Positive phase sequence uh, simply means the type of sequence that we have uh, seen so far. We didn't consider uh, the other possibility. Uh, it, it just means that from A to B you go 120 degrees I'm talking about an arbitrary triple, uh, a, a line current, a line current triple or a phase voltage triple. Okay, any balance set from uh, A to B you go 120 degrees, from B to C you go another 120 degrees clockwise. Okay, so that's what positive phase sequence means. The circuit is given. As follows. Okay, this is the Y connected source plus minus. A, C, and B. Then we have the transmission lines. Connecting our source to the delta connected load. Uh, okay. So what's given is uh, ZL, uh, ZL equals 33 plus J9 ohms. That's the per phase impedance for our delta connected load. We have ZL and ZL. The line current. IA is given to be 20 times square root of 2. The phase is 70 degrees. Okay, amps. And this is labeled as VVC, line to line voltage, at the source side. And this current is labeled as, or the phaser of that current is labeled as I1. <clears throat> okay, so further information is given as the total real power lost on the transmission lines PL three phase. Okay, so this notation just means uh, the total power. That is the power loss here, here, and here. Okay, the summation of those three individual quantities, and that's given to be twelve hundred. Watts. Okay, so that's our power loss during transmission. And the power 
factor seen by the source okay at the source side pfs is given to be 12 over 13 and it's lagging okay so equivalent impedance seen by or the equivalent load seen by the <coughs> source is inductive and finally the frequency of operation is 50 Hertz okay now given this set of information plus the current here and the uh, per phase impedance of the delta connected load, we are asked for the following. Find SS three phase total uh, complex power supplied by the source. Okay. <coughs> Efficiency of the system, which is the power, real power consumed by the load over the real power provided by the source. Okay, note that those two numbers are not equal because some of the power is lost during transmission. And we're asked for the per phase line impedance, ZL. We ask for this current, this phaser, I1. And finally, we ask for the time domain signal corresponding to this phaser here, BBC, or the line to line voltage in time domain on the source side. Okay, so let's begin our solution by, uh, by the per phase circuit. Okay, but before that, Let's uh, try to translate what I1 is into our uh, usual notation, okay, in terms of the uh, ABCs. So here we have uh, the ABC uh, labeled nodes on the source side. So that would make this node to be capital A, this node capital B, and this node is capital C. And the phase currents would be therefore I, A, B, I, B, C, and this would be I, C, A. Okay, hence I1 is no other than the phase current I, B, C. Okay, so let's, let's keep that in mind. As for the, uh, the voltage, line voltage, well, it's already given uh, in our notation namely the ABC notation. Okay, now the per phase circuit is this simple loop. Okay, we have V line to neutral, VAN. This current is IA, the line current for phase A, which is given. And ZL is one of the things that we have to figure out, the line impedance. And the uh, per phase load impedance in our per phase circuit is, now since the load is given in delta connected form, what we have to do is we have to uh, transform it to the Y connected load. And when we do that, the per phase impedances are divided by three, okay? And since it's those per phase impedances that we use in our per phase circuit, the impedance here should be this number, ZL, divided by three. Now, ZL is given as 33 plus J9 ohms. Hence, here we should have ZL over three, which is 11 plus J3 ohms. Okay, now, Let's, using the per-phase circuit, start 
obtaining some numbers out of this problem. Okay, what we know is we know since IA is given, we know its effective value. Its effective value is its magnitude divided by square root of 2. The magnitude was 20 times square root of 2, hence the effective current is 20 amps. Okay, so that's RMS value of the line current. What else? PL. Total power loss on transmission is given to be 1200 watts. Therefore, the power lost uh, on a single wire is that number divided by 3. So, PL per phase, okay, this real power lost during transmission is 1200 uh, 1, divided by 3, that's 400 watts. Okay, now since power is conserved, the real power subdivided by the source must equal the real power consumed by the, uh, the transmission line plus the real power consumed by the load. And that's also true for the per phase circuit. Hence, we can write the, uh, the power supplied by the source, we're talking over now, the per phase circuit, equals the power consumed by the line or lost on the line plus the power absorbed by the load. Okay, now that equals what? This is sort of given, okay, 1200 over 3, 400, okay, plus. And as for the real power, absorbed, consumed by the load, it equals real power, uh, real part of the impedance times the square of the RMS value of the current passing through the impedance. The RMS value of the current is 20, therefore that's the real part of the impedance, uh, 11 times uh, the square of the RMS value of the current, which is 20 squared. So that's 4800 watts. Okay, so that's the power, and we're talking about the per phase circuit, power supplied by the source. Okay, the real power supplied by the source. And then using the uh, power factor seen by the source, which is given in the question, we can figure out all the remaining powers, namely reactive power and the apparent power. So, 12 over 13 and it's lagging because it's lagging the vertical side of our power triangle will be pointing up and this is theta cosine of which is the power factor and we now know this side it's 4800 watts okay and cosine theta is 12 over 13, so that yields, this is 5200 volt amp, so that's the apparent power supplied by the source, and this is the reactive power supplied by the source, which reads 2000 volt amp react. Okay? And we figured out these numbers using the 5, 12, 13 right triangle. Okay, therefore, we now know uh, all the, the powers okay, associated to the source. In other words, the complex power per phase supplied by the source is the real part is 4800 watts, and the, uh, the reactive power is 2000 volt amp reactives. Plus J. 2000 volt amp. Okay, and then this is the per phase 
complex power. The circuit is balanced, therefore the total complex power supplied by the source is simply three times this quantity. Okay, so S S three phase equals three times S S per phase, and that's fourteen thousand four hundred plus J six thousand volt amps. Okay. And now how about the efficiency? Remember the definition of efficiency. Efficiency is the, uh, the power consumed by the load divided by the power supplied by the source. Okay. Now, eta equals PL three phase over PS three phase. Okay. Since the circuit is balanced, this clearly equals PL per phase over PS per phase. The real power supplied by the source in the per phase circuit, and this is the uh, the real power consumed by the load in the per phase circuit. So that equals what? Okay, we're, we're talking about the per phase circuit and this is the complex power supplied by the source. Okay, in the per phase circuit. Its real part is the real power supplied by the source and that real power, because the power is conserved, that real power is uh, shared by the transmission line and the load. Since 400 watts uh, has gone to uh, the transmission lines, consumed by transmission lines, what remains is 4800 minus uh, 400 watts. And that equals 11 over 12. And in percentage, it's about 91, 92 percent. Okay, so that's the efficiency of our circuit or of our system. Okay, now let's figure out the line impedance. S line per phase equals SS per phase minus the complex power delivered to the load in the per phase circuit. Okay, because complex power uh, is conserved. So that equals 4800 plus J2000 minus. Now the complex power uh, consumed by the load in the per phase circuit is the impedance, per phase impedance, times the square of the RMS value of the line current. Now we know both those quantities. This is our per phase impedance in the per phase circuit times the square of the RMS value of the current, which is 20 square. And that produces 400 plus J 800 volt amp. So that's the complex power that's consumed by the transmission line in the per phase circuit. And since the complex power is related to the square of the RMS value of the current through the impedance, we can use that relation to figure out the line impedance. SL per phase equals the line current RMS value or effective value, they're the same thing, squared times the line impedance, which yields line impedance equals okay, the complex power divided by the square of the current. 20 squared, which is 400. And that yields 1 plus J2 ohms. So that's our line impedance in our system. Okay, now let's talk about the current and voltages. So we were asked for the uh, current phaser I1 and 
by doing proper labeling on our circuit, the original circuit, we have uh, figured out that that I1 is no other than IBC according to our notation. And what we have to do now, therefore, is to figure out IBC from the given information of IA, the line current. Note that we know both the magnitude and the phase of the line current IA. For that, one way to do is to write directly the answer from memory or we can always re-derive uh, the necessary identity. For that, always it's a good idea to make use of a simple phasor diagram. Okay, so what we have is three currents, a balanced set, IAB, IBC and ICA. Okay, so this is I. A, B, I, B, C, and I, C, A. And what we're after is, we're after this current, I, B, C, because we figured out that I, B, C is I, one. Okay, now these, these three vectors, okay, we're on the complex plane, this is the origin, and these three vectors, they have the same magnitude, and the, uh, these angles are equal, they're 120 degrees. Okay, now, so let's, let me quickly draw the thing here. This is, uh, that's IA. This is IA, this is A. This is C and this was B, okay? This is I, A, B. And this is I, C, A. Okay, therefore, by KCL, this line current IA equals IAB minus ICA. Okay, so this is, here we have IAB, and this is minus ICA, and the sum of these two vectors give us IA. Okay, now this is 120 degrees. Therefore, this here is 60 degrees. The components have equal magnitude. Therefore, this thing should be IA, where this is 30 degrees and this is also okay, 30 degrees. And we know that the magnitude of IA is square root of 3 times the magnitude of IAB. Well, in this case, we know what IA is. From IA, we will go to the phase cards. Okay. Now, IA is given, or, right, IA is given, and what we have to figure out is we have to figure out IBC, because IBC is what, uh, what is labeled as the current I1. Okay, so this here was 120 degrees. Here we have 60, therefore that angle makes also 60. So, to go from IA to I1, or IBC, what you do is, you go 90 degrees, clockwise and you shrink the magnitude by a factor of square root of 3. Okay? Therefore, we immediately obtain I1, thanks to KCL and this very simple phasor diagram. Okay, so IA equals IAB minus ICA. Therefore, I1 equals, you take IA, rotate 90 degrees clockwise, so that e that's equivalent to adding a phase of minus 90 degrees or subtracting a phase of plus 90 degrees. And also you shrink the size by a factor of square root of 3, minus 90 degrees. Okay, so IA was given as 20 times square root of 2, that's the magnitude, and the phase was 70 degrees. After this operation, it becomes 20 square root of 2 divided by square root of 3, and then 70 minus 90 degrees, that equals minus 20 degrees, and that's our current I1. Okay. And finally, we have to figure out the line voltage, VBC in time domain, BBC, T. 
For that, let's also make use of a phasor diagram. But first, we have to figure out one of the <coughs> uh, we have to figure out one of the uh, line to neutral voltages on the source side, and that we can do using our per-phase circuit. Because in our per-phase circuit, we know everything. We know the impedances, and also we know the current. Okay, first figure out VAN using our per phase circuit. VAN equals IA, which is given, which is known, times the effective impedance seen by the source in the per phase circuit, which is impedance of the line plus the impedance of the load. ZL plus ZL over 3. Okay, now that's. ZL over 3 is the, the impedance load in the per phase circuit. Okay, so that equals 20 squared of 2 with phase 70 degrees times 12 plus J5. Okay, so this is ZL plus Z capital L over 3. And that equals. 20 square root of 2, 70 degrees, and write this in polar form. The magnitude is 30, and the phase is arc tangent 5 over 12. Arc tangent 5 over 12. Okay. Or arc cos 12 over 13, which we can we could have written using the power factor information. Anyway, so that product can now easily be written down because both terms are in polar form. The magnitude reads now 260 times square root of 2 and the phase is 70 degrees plus arc tangent 5 over 12 volts. So that's VAN. From VAN now we can figure out line-to-line -line voltages. Again, Let's uh, quickly draw uh, a phasor diagram and then here we used KCL, there we're going to use KVL to figure out the line-to-line -line voltages. So we have the balance set VAN, VBN and VCN equal magnitudes and the phase separation is 120 degrees. Okay, what's VBC? VBC is by definition VBN okay, minus VCN. So let me put here minus VCN minus VCN. This was 120 degrees, therefore this here is 60 degrees and they have equal magnitude. Their sum therefore produces this thing here which is VBC. Here we have 30 degrees and another 30 degrees. This whole thing was 120 degrees, therefore what remains is 60 degrees here. Okay, so what we know is VAN. And from this we have to go to VBC. What we do is we rotate 90 degrees clockwise and we increase okay, the uh, magnitude by a factor of square root of 3. Okay, so we can now write VBC equals VBN minus VCN by KVL. So that therefore means that VBC equals take VAN, okay, and increase the magnitude by square root of 3 and rotate it, rotate the phaser by 6 plus 30, 90 degrees. And that means adding or subtracting 90 degrees phase. Okay, so that produces 260 square root of 6 
and the phase is now 70 plus arctangent 5 over 12 minus 90 degrees in other words minus 20 degrees plus arc tangent 5 over 12 volts so that's vbc or that's that's vbc in phasor domain okay but we were asked for vbc t and v written in lowercase letter so that means we're talking about a time domain signal so what we have to do is we have to, uh, the information regarding the magnitude and the phase of our sinusoidal is here we also need a third piece of information and that's the frequency of oscillations so it was given in hertz as 50 and what we have to do is we have to convert that to radians per second and once that's done we can write bbc t so f is 50 hertz so in radians per second that means 100 pi okay from hertz to radians per second you multiply frequency with 2 pi that produces 314 radians per second okay and now we know everything we uh, we have everything we need to write VBCT. we have the frequency we have the magnitude and we have the phase so let's therefore write down the final answer VBCT, the time domain signal equals 260 square root of 6 cosine 100 pi t minus 20 degrees plus arc tangent 5 over 12 volts okay so that's the time domain line to line voltage between the lines b and c at the source side okay now let's move on to our second example generator the internal connections are not important for this question so it's just represented by a box from which three wires are protruding okay so we have these are the, uh, the line impedances 0.4 ohms for the resistor part and 0.8 ohms for the uh, reactants and we're talking about the balanced circuit therefore uh, the line impedance is the same for the remaining two lines and this is connected to two loads in parallel one of the loads are Y connected, the other is delta connected. So, uh, okay, so this is our Y connected load. It doesn't look like a Y, but nevertheless, it's clear that it's Y connected. And then we have the delta connected load here okay and that's our load two and parallel connection means that the respective nodes are or respective terminals meet at the same node okay it means simply that so this is connected to here this is connected to here and this terminal is connected to the terminal of the second load this is load one and this guy here is 
load two. So this source is driving two loads connected in uh, parallel. Okay, so here we list what we're given or what's measured, let's say. V line RMS equals 4.16 kilowatts. Okay, this is line to line voltage where it's measured at the load side. Okay, so this is the load, this is the load side. So the line to line voltage here is 4160 volts, the RMS value. And S4, load 1, we're told that it's 1.5 mega volt amp load. Now, here we have a volt amp, therefore we're talking about the apparent power. At uh, the power factor of three over four at power factor of 0 0.75 and the load is inductive therefore the power factor is lagging and as for the second load it's a two megawatt load and now by looking at the unit we know that what we're talking about we're talking about the real power Okay. So the second load consumes 2 megawatt of average power at power factor of 4 over 5. Okay. The second load is also inductive, therefore the power factor is lagging. Now given these, we are asked to find a Line to line voltage at the source side. We are asked for the RMS value of the voltage. And secondly, we are asked for the real power supplied by the source. Okay. And that real power is consumed by three things the line, load one, and load two. Okay. Now let's proceed with the solution. Note that in this example we're not particularly interested in the phases of the voltages or currents. So everything is carried through the RMS values of the voltages and currents. Okay. Now there are many ways that you can attack such a problem, but usually it's good to use the conservation of power. Okay, note that any kind of power, complex power, real power, reactive power, they're all conserved. And uh, that can be very useful when used in computations. Okay, so therefore let's compute the complex powers for each load. Okay. So S1 equals apparent power which is 1.5 times 10 to the 6 and then times cosine of phi plus j sine of phi and cosine of phi is 0 0.75 that's that's the power factor so this is our cosine of phi plus j sine of phi sine of phi how do we find sine of phi from the relation that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. But that can produce both a positive sign and negative sign. How do we determine the sign? By looking at this information. It's lagging, therefore the sign is also positive. 
and that means it's square root of 7 over 4 okay and that produces approximately 1.125 1 plus j 0 0.992 mega volt amps so that's the complex power delivered to the first load okay as for the second load we're not given the apparent power but we are given the real power and real power is the real part of the complex power okay and the real power divided by the apparent power is the cosine phi and cosine phi is 0 0.8 therefore real power divided by the cosine is the apparent power okay so this is the apparent power consumed by the second load times the cosine plus uh, j sine of phi again the sine of sine is positive because the load is an inductive or the power factor is lagging so that produces 0 0.6 and then we have 2 plus j 1.5 megavolt amps okay now since complex power is conserved so that means these two loads considered as a single entity consumes complex power of s1 plus s2 and that complex power we can call s load now we consider those two loads as a single load so that produces s load s1 plus s2 equals 3.125 plus j 2.492 megavolt amps okay and now let's make use of the per phase circuit per phase circuit okay this is 0 0.4 plus j 0 0.8 ohms so that's the line impedance okay which we make use of in our per phase circuit this here is van line to neutral voltage uh, at the source this is a this is capital a and this voltage here is v a n okay line to neutral voltage at um, at the sort uh, at the load side and this load okay in our per phase circuit or the per phase load consumes a complex power which we denote by SA okay now because the circuit is balanced this complex quantity must be one third of the power consumed by the load okay as a whole so we can easily therefore compute SA which is one third SL and SL is here and that produces 1.04 plus J 0.83 mega volt amps so that's SA and VAN RMS equals so the RMS value of this voltage is what so we're given line to line voltage at the load side so if you know the line to line voltage or the RMS value of the line to line voltage we know how to uh, move to the line to neutral voltage all we have to do is just divide by square root of 3 so the, the voltage shrinks when you go from line to line to line to neutral so the line to neutral voltage at the load side therefore is this number divided by square root of 3 which equals 2400 volts okay and then
From the complex power we can figure out the apparent power, namely its magnitude, and that magnitude must equal this RMS voltage times the RMS value of the current. Okay. IA. And that allows us to figure out IA. And which that IA we can use to figure out eventually the voltage at the uh, source side. Okay, so line current which is also the phase current in our per phase circuit times line to neutral voltage RMS equals the per phase apparent power okay the magnitude of SA which is 1.33 times 10 to the 6 volt atoms. Okay. So that produces IA RMS equals this number divided by 2400, which produces 555 amps. Okay, so that's the RMS value of the line current. And then we can figure out using the per phase circuit the complex power supplied by the source. Again, we, we, uh, we can use the uh, conservation of power. We know SA, it's here. And we know the RMS value of the current, so that means squaring it and multiplying it with the line impedance, we can figure out the complex power consumed by the line. And we can add those two numbers, S capital A and S lowercase l and together they produce the power that's supplied by the source thanks to conservation of power so sa equals s line which is j.8 times ia rms squared plus per phase complex power of the load and that reads 1.16 plus j 1.08 megavolt amps. Okay, and then we have IA RMS times VAN RMS. This is the apparent power supplied by the source, and apparent power is the magnitude of this complex number. SA. So that is 158 times 10 to the 6 volt amps. Okay. And since we know the RMS value of the current from this, we can figure out line to neutral voltage, the RMS value of the line to neutral voltage at the source side. And from that we can we can go to line to line voltage by simply raising it by a factor of square root of 3. Okay, V A N R M S equals two thousand eight hundred fifty five volts approximately, from which we can write V line line to line voltage at the source side, comma R M S. Its R M S value equals this times square root of three. Which is approximately 5,000 volts. Okay, and finally, we are asked for the real power supplied by the source. So PS three phase equals the real power supplied by the source in the per phase circuit multiplied by three, and the real power supplied by the source is simply the real part of the complex power 
okay, supplied by the source. So what you do is you take this number, multiply by 3, and that's the, uh, the real power supplied by the source. 3 times real part of S A. And that's 3.48. Megawatts.